Well, hello, God bless you, Bishop Patrick L. Wooden Sr. here, and check this out. I'm coming to you much earlier today than I normally do on Thursdays, and I appreciate your receiving me. Now, friends, as you know, for the last few Thursdays, I've been in and out of different obligations uh, uh, on our Thursday night uh, uh, services. Uh, one time it was the men's conference, and then the national women's conference, and and uh, and we had our jurisdictional aim conference. And uh, I think I got in on a Thursday night between those times. And yes, uh, tonight I will be in Ohio. But my friends, the word of the Lord is going to come forth and I want you to tune in. One of my best preachers is going to be delivering the word of the Lord. And I'll tell you right now, you're going to be blessed by what he has to say. You know, Paul said this to the saints at uh, um, uh, Philippi, he says, uh, not all, he says, as you have always obeyed, uh, this is Philippians chapter number two, verse 12. Wherefore, my beloved, as you have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but much more in my absence. Thank you for how you stand by this ministry, even when we present these powerful in-house elders, preachers and teachers. You must admit, and I've heard from many of you, God has given us some powerful, powerful men of God and women of God to deliver the word of the Lord. Now, having said that, I want to address something today. I want to address something that needs to be addressed. And... Uh, and I want you to hear me. I want you to hear me uh, because <clears throat> the doctrine, my friends, the doctrine is under attack. The Bible predicted that what we believe would come under attack in the last days and that men would fall for it, that men would be pulled away. First Timothy chapter four, verse one says, now the spirit speaketh expressly. That is the spirit speaketh clearly that in the latter times, in the latter times, some shall depart from the faith given heed to seducing, that is, misleading spirits and doctrines of devils, demon doctrines. Now notice what it says. It will depart, some will depart from the faith. That is, he's not saying some will depart from having faith. He's saying that some will depart from the Christian doctrine, the faith, not merely what we feel, not merely our likes or dislikes. Forget that. What we believe. Satan is trying to chip away at what we believe. He's trying to make us think, lead us to believe that what we believe doesn't matter. As long as we get along, get a crowd, raise the money, you know, have a good time, then we're all right. But I'm here to tell you that that's a trick of Satan because for it to be Christianity, for it to please God, it has to be a, a in line with the word. Now, we are told this in 1 Peter chapter 3 and verse 15, one of my favorite passages. It says, but sanctify, listen to this, but sanctify the Lord God in your hearts. Set Christ apart in your heart. There ought to be a place in our heart for Jesus Christ, and, it's, and it's, it's the place of prominence. No one should have priority. Nothing should outweigh Jesus Christ and the doctrine of Christ. It says, but sanctify the Lord God in your heart, and look at this, and be ready. How often, Brother Gary says, be ready always to give an answer to give an answer, the word answer there literally, to give a defense to every man that asks you a reason for the hope that is in you with meekness and with fear, with meekness and fear, that is with reverence. So we're, as believers, we're to sanctify Jesus, we're to be ready always to give a defense to be able to tell people, not simply what we believe, but check this out, 
the reason we believe it. See, in our minister's class, I've, I have taught uh, the ministers here at the church at Upper Room for over 30 years that you ought to be able to explain how you know that you've been born again while sitting on your hands, showing no emotion, no hollering, hollering, no screaming. You ought to be able to explain to people what happened to you when Jesus Christ entered into your heart. And you ought to be able to explain to people why you attend the church you attend, why you believe what you believe, not simply what you believe, but why you believe it. And it's called being a Christian apologist. Jesus warned us that in the last days, false prophets would come, false Christs would come. And he said this, and this makes you tremble. And he says, and shall deceive many. Now, my friends, you don't have to be in the number of those who have been deceived. So it wouldn't get to the point. Well, the point is, and I have no personal animus, no personal attack. You will notice in my presentation today, it will be void of coming after anyone on a personal level because I don't use um, th this medium for that. I never have, and I won't start to, to do that now. When I've been attacked online, when I've been talked about, when I've been singled out, if you notice, I do not retaliate. I don't have to defend me. I'm just called to defend God's truth. The God of the Bible defends me. He told me, you shall hold your peace and I will fight your battles. And my friends, he has done just that. So I want to talk to you. Are you listening to me? I want to talk to you today now. I'm going a little longer today than normal uh, because uh, this is my time of sharing with you. I received a video, a clip of uh, from... Uh, uh, brother, Dr. Reverend Creflo Dollar, and uh, brother Dollar on the clip says to his members, everything that I've taught you on the subject of tithing, throw away, disregard. He says that he was wrong. He says, I won't apologize for it because in going down that road, it got me to where I am but I was wrong. Now, he said that, you know, the things that, uh, uh, the, the two things that, 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 that religion uses to control people is fear and guilt. Well, I, I can't address religion because uh, uh, what we promote here is a relationship with Jesus Christ. And uh, uh, now, 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 by definition, the word religion means system of worship. And I've been a tither since 1977. And I'll tell you, fear and guilt wasn't a part of uh, uh, the reason I tithed, especially when I came into the understanding. And he actually says in his, uh, in his, uh, uh, in his, in his delivery that, uh, much of it he did not understand. So perhaps that's the problem right there. And I'm not about to say that whatever he taught them then about tithing and the books that he says that they should throw away, I by no means am saying that they should keep those books. I by no means am saying that he, what he used to say about tithing uh, was wrong because I don't know what he said. So I'm not here to defend his past tithe position. I don't know, and I'm not interested in it. But I tell you what, his current position on tithing should be, uh, uh, should join the, the, the rest of the stuff that he said that his members should throw into the trash can. Because I know what he's saying about tithing now is incorrect. Now, he bases his uh, uh, presentation on a chapter that has nothing to do with tithing. It's a chapter that deals with sin. Romans chapter number six, verse one says, what shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? Are you calling tithing sin? 
I've never read where tithing was sin. Uh, and, 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 and if, if tithing was only uh, a new uh, Old Testament thing, and if someone was t uh, tithing today, you would call that action of giving 10% to the church sin? <laughs> I don't think that that action should be placed into the sin category anyway. <laughs> I mean, if uh, peop, peop, there are people who give more than 10% of their earnings to the church. Are they sinning? There are people who do less. But for, for, for tithing, to be placed into, a, into the category of sin, that's error. The verse he uses says, verse 14, for sin shall not have dominion over you. For you are not under law, but under grace. Now the law was put in place to magnify sin and to show that sin is exceedingly sinful. Uh, I would invite you to read Romans chapter number seven and read what the Bible says about sin and how sin did take advantage of the law because people couldn't live up to the law. But those were acts of sin. Now, the law, he says also that tithing, and I, I want to go as fast as I can with this. He says that tithing was a part of the Old Testament. And then he relegates tithing to the law. And I'm pretty sure that Brother uh, 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 Dollar believes that adultery was is still adultery. That's part of the Old Testament. Fornication, that's part of the Old Testament. Uh, divination, necromancy, uh, murder, uh, fraticide. Um, uh, these things are, were, were written in the Old Testament as well. I'm sure you believe that there are still sins. Uh, I don't think I've read in the Bible what the Bible just specifically mentions in the New Testament bestiality, but in the law, it does tell people not to sleep with an animal. I'm sure you still believe that that's a sin, so forth and so on. So that's, that's a very weak argument there. But um, back to the, the, to the subject of, of tithing. He says that tithing is a part of the law uh, under the law. Now, He's not entirely incorrect, but he's incorrect. Brother Dollar knows this, or if he doesn't, he should. Tithing, to give the tithe, predated the law. Tithing was not a product of the law. Do you hear me? Tithing was not and is not and has never been a product of the law. Did the law speak of tithing? Did the law go along with tithing? Did the law embrace tithing? Yes, but did the law give us tithing? Did tithing originate from the law? The answer is a resounding no. It did not. For we find some 430 years or more before the law, we find Abraham in Genesis chapter 14 and verse 20 giving tithe. The Bible says, and uh, speaking of Abraham, and blessed he the most uh, blessed and blessed be the most high God, which have delivered thine enemies into thy hand. This was Melchizedek talking. And the Bible says this about Abraham. And he, Abraham, gave, gave him tithe of all. Now this is 400 years before Moses came with the law. Uh, Genesis chapter 28, verse 22. Jacob. And this stone, which I have set for a pillar, shall be God's house. And of all that thou shalt give me, I will surely give the tenth unto thee. Here is the father, Jacob, 
telling God, I'm going to give you 10%. Here is the uh, father, the patriarch, the father of the faith, Abraham paying tithe to Melchizedek. There is no law. There is no guilt. The, the, there, there, is no, there is no decalogue. This is before we got the, the Ten Commandments. Moses wasn't even born. And yet we find these men uh, paying tithe. So his claim, well, tithing is of the law. No, sir. No, sir. No, sir. No, sir. With all due respect, tithing predated the law. Now, why am I talking about the fact that tithing predates the law? Well, and I'm sure, uh, I mean, maybe he doesn't. Uh, 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 Pastor Dollar knows this, but if he doesn't, he should. The Bible says this about things that God put in place that predated the law. Uh, Galatians chapter number three. And remember, when you read, when you read Galatians chapter number three, you know, one of the things that Paul bat battles with the Galatians is there uh, is, was the Judaizers trying to bring the law to the, ga to, to the Galatians and they were, uh, they were being deceived and they were going through because people were trying to make them uh, a subject to the law. Now we know this, that uh, uh, we all in this current day, now, follow me now, follow me now. We all in this current day live and walk and we claim the Abrahamic promise. Brother Dollar claimed the Abrahamic promise. All of us claim to be children of Abraham. Well, the Bible says this about that claim to be a part of the Abrahamic covenant. And by the way, Abraham paid tithe. The Abrahamic covenant, look at this. It says in Galatians chapter 3, verse 17, and this I say, that the covenant that was confirmed before of God in Christ, the law, which was 430 years afterwards, that came along 430 years later, cannot disannul, uh, that is, cannot cancel that it should be, that it should make the promise of none effect. The promise that God gave Abraham 430 years before the law, even though the law had been fulfilled in Christ, that promise of being a part of the Abrahamic co covenant, we being joint heirs with Christ, claiming things by faith. And, and you know the word faith movement's all about claiming everything by faith. I mean, these guys were teaching you uh, out of context that you could command God when the whole context of uh, co uh, concerning your word, command ye me, he was rebuking Israel for trying to do just that. But one of the hallmarks of that, that particular movement is that they lift scripture out of context. The truth of the scriptures are always found in the context of the delivery and in the context that they were written in. If the Abrahamic covenant, which was given to Abraham, was, and was given 430 years before Moses came with the law. If after the law had been fulfilled in Christ, that Abrahamic covenant, which existed 430 years before the law, still exists today, then tithing, which existed, 430 years before the law, Abraham paid tithe. Then tithing, which was not a product of the law, which was not, which did not originate with the law. Tithing, my friends, is indeed for today. And I want to encourage every one of you out there to tithe to your church. And I pray that your church does with the tithe what we do with the tithe here. The tithe go to the church. And the tithe is used to pay for the church, to bless the Levites, those of us who work at the church, to keep the upkeep of the church, 
to operate the house of God. And it, it is tithing that gives the church its independence. I'm troubled by how much the church now is partnering up with corporate America, partnering up with the government. We're partnering with this group and partnering with that. Well, let me tell you something. There's no such thing as a free lunch. And these people are going to want something for their uh, money. Jesus said this. Jesus said in Matthew's gospel, chapter 23, verse 23, woe unto you, scribes, Pharisees, and hypocrites, for you pay tithe of mint and anise and cunning and have omitted the weightier matters of the law, judgment, mercy, and faith. These you ought to have done and not to leave the other undone. Jesus said you should put more emphasis on, on judgment, fairness, mercy, and faith. Do this, but don't leave the tithing undone. The Hebrew writer, I'm coming to a close with this, uh, uh, in chapter number seven. Now, the Hebrew writer um, um, wrote it, New Testament, this is the temple had not been destroyed in 70 AD at the time when this book uh, was written. And the Hebrew writer said this, and he was writing about Melchizedek and Abraham. And when Abraham gave him tithe and all that, and he said in verse seven, chapter seven, verse seven, and without contradiction, the less, the inferior is blessed of the better. The inferior is blessed of the superior. And he says, and look at this, and here, in one case, men that died received tithe. And there, uh, put here, uh, he receiveth them of whom it is witness that he liveth. And as, look at this, and as I may so say, Levi, now this is Levi was the, uh, was Abraham's great grandson. Levi also received, received tithe and paid tithe in Abraham. That is when Abraham paid tithe, Levi was in his loins. In the Old Testament, men paid tithe. When the Hebrew writer wrote this book, men were paying tithe. Paul teaches that they that live, uh, pr uh, preach the gospel should live of the gospel. So my friends, I want to say to you that tithing is indeed for today. The prophet Malachi said, bring you all the tithe into the storehouse so that my house can operate. And God said, I will open, I will open the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that there shall not be room enough to receive. My friends, I am a tither. My wife and I have been the number one tithers at the Upper Room Church of God in Christ for 34 years running. And if I live to see September, it will be my 35th year here as pastor, and I intend to be the church's number one tither. I tithe and I will continue to tithe. And when we receive the tithe, the tithe go to the church. The tithe doesn't go to me. Some say, well, the tithe go to the Levite. Uh, it, it does. But when you talk about the Levite, now if, you, if, you, if you're using that word Levite to describe the tribe of Levi, all of the Levites, you're correct. If you try to, if you use it to describe one man, you're incorrect. See, because of the 12 tribes, God gave 11 of the 12, 12 tribes land. They're actually called in some writings, secular tribes. They had land so they could grow their crops and grow the food and grow this and grow that. And what they were to do is to take 10% of what they grew and bring it to the house of the Lord. The Levites who were not given land, they were given the temple. They were given the, the tabernacle. 
They, they were to keep the holy things holy. Keep the house of God up. The Levites, the priests, they were not given land. You see? And so the people, when the 11 brought in their tenth, each one, and paid their tithe and brought their offerings to the house of God, then this tribe of Levi could live because the people brought the tithe in. So this is the way the tithing is supposed to work. If the tithe that we receive here went to me, man, we have to eliminate everything, Gary. We could do this. We have to eliminate jobs. We'd have to eliminate our, our outreach. We'd have to eliminate what we do for the poor, all the people we feed in the community. I mean, we've got to come off the air. We can't. But because we use the tithe to operate the church and we're able to stand up and preach with power and authority because we're supported by the tithe and the offerings of the saints, that gives us our independence. Now, why, Brother Dollar, would say this, and I'm sure every one of these passages, he knows them. If he doesn't, he should. And you who are listening, check behind me. I know you will. You'll see that I'm telling you the truth. The church needs to be independent today as never before. The preacher needs to have his voice today as never before. I dare to say that the great Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King, that great theologian, that great preacher, would not have been able to do what he did had he been anything else in the black community, had he been of any other profession than the church. They couldn't fire him. They couldn't fire him. They couldn't muzzle him. The Bible says, Thou shalt not muzzle the ox that treaded out the corn. So bring your tithe, my friends, to your church. Give your offerings as you have been doing. Don't be motivated by fear nor guilt. It's the right thing to do. It is indeed for today. It is a part of the covenant of God. It is not the fruit of the law, although the law did not disagree with it. The law certainly strengthened it. The law certainly embraced it, but the law didn't create it. And I think that these things are important enough to point out to you. In my conclusion, I want to say to every one of you, what we believe matter. Oh, we're not going to worry about things that separate us. We're just going to look past those things and we're just going to work together. Well, that depends on what those things are. And when there are things as important as this subject, or the person of Jesus Christ, or the Godhead, or life. It's amazing to me the number of you, I'm going into the weeds now, the number of you that could post and, and thank you for your support, for, for you supporting the church and supporting tithing, but many of you didn't, 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 <laughs> didn't say anything for life. When, when Roe v. Wade was overturned, mute for many of you, but we, we're speaking on this subject. Thank God we are. But I want to say to you, the devil is trying to chip away little by little at the doctrine. Well, I'm here to defend the Christian doctrine because the doctrine is all we got. Meet us tonight right here at the Upper Room Church of God in Christ for Bible study. <laughs> you got it. Bible study tonight. We're going to study the word of the Lord together. You're going to be blessed by the man of God and yours truly will be with you. The Lord willing back in the saddle uh, next Thursday night doing what we do. Now goes away and pay your time <laughs> with a smile on your face. <laughs>